What's up guys? Today we're doing brand new brakes on my RS7. We're replacing the front and rear rotors and pads. We're at F1 Motorsports. They've got some pretty cool cars. Waiting to move some cars around so we get the RS7 on a lift. Got this pretty dang cool Aventador. Some classics. Got a 308 up there. An older Aston. 3 Series. Aston. BMW. Say hi to Jeremy and Derek. And then there's a scat pack getting worked on over there. So Paget slash TMD Friction, Derek's the representative today, supplied these, these are the front pads, right? Yep, front pads. And the front rotors. Front rotors. These are gonna be OEM quality replacement parts for you. Yep. Uh, straight from Germany, actually. These yep. are made overseas there. Um, we get these through TMD Germany, who sends them to us, featuring our, uh, these are our brass um, back plate pins. Okay. It's our patent. So these are still semi-metallic pads? Yes, sir. Gotcha, okay. Yep. And then uh, we would upgrade it to the RSC package if we ran the uh, carbon ceramic rotors. Uh, I don't have money for carbon ceramic rotors. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> that's the problem with today. The, uh, so that's nice. These are the, these are the wave rotor design too, which supposedly for Audi RS, it, um, they claim it's lower weight, which I guess is valid, but also uh, better heat rejection due to greater surface area, which is definitely important. Oh yeah. Um, big heavy car, brakes, high performance, speed, you, you need good brakes. Got to shuffle some cars around. First, the Aventador. Holy crap. That's loud. <laughs> Never get tired of seeing an Aventador, oh my god. Race the car up in monster truck mode to get it up on the uh, scissor lift. Yeah. Alright, so here's the main purpose of today's video. Well, two main purposes. The first one is to show you guys how to redo brakes on an RS7. Um, the second one is to explain and kind of demonstrate how you can not get completely ripped off doing brakes on a car like this. This is not a cheap vehicle. MSRP usually between $115,000 to $130,000. Even used or expensive. And the ownership maintenance costs are quite high. But some of them border upon just absolutely ridiculous and just unreasonable. If I went to the dealership and went, I want new brakes please. It, I've heard people getting charged anywhere between $3,500 to $5,000 for a set of brakes on the RS7. Now, I went and looked on Audi parts. Um, looked genuine Audi parts. AudiUSAparts.com. And I think... Rotors, pads, um, all in was about just $3,500 in parts alone. That's without any labor. Now you can go to a third party site like ECS Tuning. Um, even there, there was about over $3,000 just in parts. The rotors are almost $1,000 for a set. So that is a lot of freaking money. I do not want to spend that amount of money. I think it's unreasonable um, and it just doesn't appeal to me to spend that much on brakes. So there are ways to get around it. One of the things you can do is somebody has a list a bunch of different websites where you can source all the parts for a lot less. I think all in he spent 20, just under $2,300 for front and rear rotors, pads, and the sensors and everything needed to do a brake job on your RS7. Then you can either do it yourself if you have the tools and experience, or you come to somewhere like F1 Motorsports, come to Jeremy, have an independent shop who also knows what they're doing, also save you a ton of money compared to dealership labor. I personally source the parts from all sorts of places. So Derek from Paget and is it Paget or Paget? Paget. All right, Paget. I keep saying Paget. <laughs> Derek from Paget and slash TMD Friction. Um, I have a friend who works there. They helped get the OE level parts, brake replacements for the front rotors and front pads. The exact same wave rotor design, the same thickness, the same spec. Everything is identical to OE. I have OE rear rotors that Jeremy ordered for me. Um, you talk to somebody who has a shop and you get a pretty good deal on them. So those were, I think, Jeremy, how much were those? Like 900? 800. 800, 800 for a set of rear rotors, which is a lot better. I actually, based on what some people on the forum said, have a set of CarQuest wherever gold pads that I'm gonna try on the car. There are semi-metallic rear and there are ceramic fronts, which I don't know if I'm gonna use yet, um, but those are, way way cheaper uh i don't know if some people might be familiar with that i was initially hesitant because they almost seem too cheap and i don't want to put things that aren't good on my car but there are actually forum members who took their cars with those brake pads to the track drove them hard said no issues bite was perfect a lot less dust a lot less noise all the performance was there so i am willing to try that out too that saved a ton of money Look at these sensors. These are your brake wear sensors. They are so basic, just like a loop of wire encased here, little connector right there. 
This thing, if you go to the Audi dealer, they want $160 for the sensor. $160, that's stupid. I got this for like $12. You can literally find it, the same exact thing, as long, if it's not VW Genuine or Audi Genuine, it's one-tenth of the price. So don't waste your money on things like that. Do your research and you can save a lot of money on things like this. Oh, wanna know something else funny my car comes with? I have the original factory first aid kit. No way. And, and it's even still wrapped in the plastic. What? Look at this thing. I don't think I'd want to use it. <laughs> no, I'm not gonna leave it. It's like got German all over the back. This was probably like a $300 option. The That's original awesome. That's sweet. Audi RS7 first aid kit in case you get an act, I don't know, cut yourself in your fancy $100. Like to <laughs> Something else with these cars is you need VCDS, AKA VACOM, to release the rear parking brake. Otherwise, I mean, you can't do your brakes. So it's a software with a cable it plugs in. It's really good and I've used it plenty of times. I used it last night to uh, check for a couple codes on the car, some soft codes. I've used it to recode things like lights before. It's pretty awesome. Gonna pop these pins out. These are gonna get reused, so. I am taking the caliper bolts off. Okay. Slide the caliper off and then we can get the, the bracket off and then we'll have pads in it. Yeah, there, there's quite a lip right here. Mm -hmm. That's 24,000 miles of usage on an RS7, why? <laughs> Why? <laughs> New rear rotor is on. Look at that. It looks so nice and clean. For now? Yeah, it's not gonna last long. <laughs> so that's how you can tell these are very, very much OEM. They have an actual Audi badge on it, so it's genuine. It's so something with this car, even brand new, like just say you bought an R7, 10 miles, drive it off the lot, under the right temperature conditions and such, it can be really noisy, brake-wise. You can get a lot of brake noise. Mine are so bad to the point where it sounds like I'm pulling up in a garbage truck, which I really, really dislike because it just sounds unrefined on a car of this caliber. So I'm hoping with these new rotors and pads, they aren't crazy noisy because that's really irritating and it's something you can't really get away with with performance cars. You just have noisy brakes. New brake pads lubricated, installed, all back together. Sensor's on. Jeremy's moving on to the other side. Looks like the front is almost done too. New pads and new rotors in. Move to the passenger side, knocking out those pins. Is that just all brake dust emanating yeah. up? <laughs> on the rear pad brake, rear, ugh, I can't even talk. Rear <laughs> brake pad lubricated. Something like that. Something like that. Something stoppy stoppy thing. Ow. Since this is from Snap-on, it probably cost $12,000. <laughs> probably. And your firstborn child. Yeah, way too much. <laughs> Jeremy's workout of the day, look at those guns. Yeah. Lifting up 21 inch tires and wheels. It's the only exercise I ever get. <laughs> so both sets of rear rotors are on, pads are on, wheels are on. I'm gonna close the parking brake. There we go. All right, everything's torqued down. All right, we're in the car, Jeremy, now. We're gonna go out, we gotta bed the brakes in. Wanna do a quick rundown of the procedure? Yeah, so we're gonna do uh, about about 35 to 40 down to about five miles an hour, maybe 10. Do that about three or maybe three to five okay. times. And then um, what we're trying to do is we're just trying to get a, a surface of pad material on the rotors mm -hmm. just to get, them, to get them set. And then we do do that like three times and then we'll go to higher speeds, do that okay. a few times and so on and so forth. Yeah, so that helps prolong the life of the brakes in general. Yeah, and it'll help them quiet too. Yeah, okay, make them quiet too. So this is very important. And there we go, we are done swapping brakes on the RS7. Brand new rotors and pads on all four corners. It actually wasn't that insanely complicated when you actually watch it and watch it happen, which almost makes the insane cost at doing it like a dealership seem even more unjustified. So I would highly recommend finding the parts yourself, source them yourself, check out the forums. They're a very, very valuable resource. There is a part list out there for people. If you have an RS7, there is a parts list that has everything listed. We can get everything for about $2,200. So if somebody's telling you you gotta spend three to four grand on it, do not do that. I did not do that, saved a ton. Again, special thanks to Pagit and TMD Friction. Um, they helped out with the front 
rotors and front pads. Thanks again to Jeremy and F1 Motorsports here. They've, Jeremy's done plenty of work on my cars. Back when I had the Boss 302 Laguna Seca, he did the transmission swap on my car when I had to put a new transmission into it. Um, obviously, he just did a brake shop on the car. We're going to go a little bit easier the brakes, get it in. Hopefully, they aren't squeaky. Um, they aren't squealing like crazy anymore. Hopefully, I get more life than, I mean, I'm at 24,270 miles on it, and I just had to do all new brakes. I'll be a little more gentle with them. I'm not going to drive this car crazy hard, but I'm still going to enjoy it. Hopefully, get a little more life out of them. But there it is. That is how to do new brakes on an RS7. Hope you guys like this video. If you have any questions, please comment below. If you're in the Michigan area and need work done in your car, highly recommend Jeremy at F1. I'll put everything in the link below. Thanks for watching.